Today I have a brief video for you on scene and summary and how you can use those to control the pace of the narrative and also how you can use those to keep your audience interested and keep your story moving forward. So you probably know the difference between these already but I'm going to go over it anyway. Scene is moment to moment action. It's when you describe all of the things that happen, maybe not all of them, but many of the things that happen using vivid sensory description. So the same appeals to the senses that you use throughout the poetry unit are useful here when you're writing in scene. Often you expect scene to slow down more when tension rises. As we are reaching the climax of the story, then the scenes will contain more and more vivid detail. Also, remember that the rising action in a story consists of a series of peaks and valleys of tension. Each of these peaks should have more detail and should slow the pace of the narrative more than what we see in these periods of low tension. Summary, on the other hand, doesn't have as much detail. There's still some detail included. Uh, if you think about Sonny's Blues, the first page or so of Sonny's Blues takes place in the subway, in the classroom, and then as we're leaving the classroom. This is all summarized, right? That's an entire day starting from a subway ride to the end of class. There is still some detail but we've glossed over most of the events. We don't have to hear about the screech of the subway as it pulls into the stop, or about the crush of people in the subway station as our narrator is trying to get up to the street, or the way the air in the courtyard smells as they're walking to class. All of these things are sort of glossed over, but there's still details there, right? We get to hear what the children sound like, we get to see some of what the school looks like. Summary is also used for backstory often. You'll have just the briefest amounts of detail recounted. It's used for moving from place to place quickly. That's what we have in the subway and also for skipping time, which is the rest of what we have in that first page where we move through an entire day very quickly. Summary is often used in these periods of low tension, although not always. And it's also used when we're building up to a point of tension, just to collapse time a lot. So the reason that you do this, the reason that you use summary and scene is to control the speed of your narrative, um, to control the pace. You want to keep your reader interested. So you want to keep things happening, which means you want to keep giving them scene but you also want to give them a chance to breathe. Now, how much scene you give to a particular plot point, a thing that happens, an event, is going to depend on how important the event is to the plot. How much does it affect the characters? And how important is it that your audience knows that it happens? Uh, we have a, a few examples. First, I want to talk about the daughter's death in Sonny's Blues. The first time it's mentioned, it's less than a sentence. It's there and it's gone. We have no detail whatsoever. This is summarized completely. Uh, so we might put that there just to plant the seed. And then our reader, if they're careful, knows that this is an important thing that happened that is going to come back later. Another thing that we might see like that is in detective novels. Sometimes an important point is going to be just glossed over very quickly in summary because the reader is only supposed to get it if they're being very careful, if they're reading like a detective. So I have more examples of scene and summary. And the way that we use scene and summary in these cases is really going to depend on what we want this event to accomplish for our story. So our first example, our character is going to drive to the store to buy milk, come back home. All we want is to get the character out of the house so that something can happen while they're gone. And if, if this is what we want to do, then we summarize the entire trip to the store 
and we go back to scene afterward. Janelle drove to the store and picked up a gallon of milk. When she got back, she found the front door unlocked. Her brother Eddie was in the kitchen, his face obscured by an uncharacteristic amount of scruff, his hands frying the last of the eggs on the stove. Hey, sis, he grinned at her. It looked like he hadn't brushed his teeth in months. So the entire trip to the store is covered in one sentence, right? We have one detail, which is what she bought at the store. But honestly, we probably knew that already. She probably had to go to the store to get milk. We got her out of the house. She comes back, and as the scene unfolds here, we have more details. The front door is unlocked, and her brother Eddie's in the kitchen. His face is scruffy. His hands are frying the last of the eggs on the stove. So we have more and more details. We, we've given the important points here. And then we continue with detail and speech dialogue down here. So that is one effective summary. We get the character one place and then bring them back. We do it very quickly and then we get to our scene. If instead of just getting the character out of the house, we want to show or emphasize something about the character through this trip to the store to buy milk, um, we might put some more details into the summary. So here we have Janelle drove to the store, carefully following the speed limit and checking her blind spots. She picked up a gallon of milk, paid with exact change, and drove back home. This is not seen. It's not moment to moment. It doesn't tell us what she saw on the way to the store. It doesn't tell us what she saw on the way back. It doesn't tell us all the sounds, all the smells, etc. What, whatever happened in the store. But it does give us a lot more detail about this character. You know, after reading this or hearing it, more about Janelle than you knew before. You know what kind of person she is, a little bit more. And this is all accomplished by adding a few details to summary. We could, of course, add these details in a scene, but because these details are included in summary here, they are emphasized for our reader. They are not obscured by all of the vivid details we might include in a scene. So yes, in a scene, Janelle would still be careful. She would still pay with exact change, all of this stuff. But by including it in summary, we are emphasizing these details. Another option for use of scene and summary. Character drives to the store to buy milk and comes back home again for the third time. What do we want to accomplish? Well, something is going to happen on this trip to the store that we want to emphasize. And what we're going to do is summarize most of this, but we're going to drop into scene when that important thing happens when we show the important thing about the character. Janelle drove to the store and picked up a gallon of milk. In the parking lot, her mind on the cake she would be enjoying that evening, she felt a tug on her sleeve and looked down. There, his upturned face streaked with dirt, was a young boy, very young, with sad, hazel eyes. Can you help me? I'm lost, the voice said. His lips quivered as though he was going to cry. Get off me, Janelle said, yanking away her arm. She got in her car, gave the boy one more glance, and drove home. So, starting right here. So, Janelle drove to the store and picked up a gallon of milk. Uh, this is the same line that we used in our first part, where that trip to the store, picking up the gallon of milk, that does nothing for us. It's, it's not important. Um, instead, once we get back to the parking lot, we start dropping into scene. Her mind on the cake she would be enjoying that evening. She feels a tug on her sleeve and look down. This is sensory detail. There we have more sensory detail, what we can see. And this boy's face is made real to our reader. Can you help me? I'm lost, the boy said. His lips quivered as though he was going to cry. So we have all of this detail. We're trying to make this boy seem very real, sympathetic, everything so that when Janelle says get off me yanks away your arm drives away and this drive home is summarized because that's not important what's important is that Janelle's a jerk to this kid who's lost and again there we've got this important detail about our character Janelle and this time we're giving it in scene and the the rest of it is summarized so each of these things has uses uh, a lot of it depends on 
knowing what you want your reader to get out of a particular scene or summary and practicing it, trying it multiple different ways. 